So far, we've taken a look at the first two forms of authentication, right? We've taken a look at something you know, which is username and password. We've also taken a look at something you have, for example, smart cards and security tokens. Now, we're going to talk about something you are, something you have about you. And that, of course, would be biometrics. Now, biometrics in general causes a lot of concern with privacy experts. People are like, I don't want you measuring my whatever. So biometrics is definitely a very good security method. It's very good authentication method, but it does cause us some concerns because let's say that where you works wants your fingerprints on file because that's how they're going to give you access to something or they might want your retinal print or your hand print or voice pattern. Some of us, I mean, even working for the Bureau and the intelligence community, I didn't have to give them that stuff to access computers or even to get into a room. So again, security experts love this stuff, privacy experts not so much. So biometrics measures some physical, psychological, or behavioral characteristic of the user. Now, we're probably familiar with fingerprints, and I go work out right now at 24 Hour Fitness. 24 Hour Fitness, I put in something I know, which is my phone number, and they also scanned my fingerprints. And so I put my number in, and then I beep, and then I'm allowed into the facility. When I lived in South Florida, I had a season pass to Disney World, the happiest place on earth. And I had a season pass, and they measured from, I want to say it was from here to here on my finger. So I would give them the season pass, and I'd put my hand in the scanner. And I remember asking the guy, I'm like, are you doing my fingerprints? And he's like, Disney World doesn't do your fingerprints. Well, they were measuring from here to here, which I guess is a unique pattern. Um, it didn't ever work, so they always used to flag me through. But if you watch CSI or NCIS, you know that there are certain things that are supposed to identify people from other people that have a pretty good record. So retinal patterns are probably the most effective means of authentication when we're talking about biometrics, followed by fingerprints. Then we have handprints, and then we have voice patterns. Voice patterns actually is more of a behavioral characteristic than a physical characteristic because of how you speak and how you um, stress certain words, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a quick overview of authentication. Hopefully, if you run into any of this at the job or in your daily life, you understand a little bit more, especially as we're seeing more and more biometrics show up. For example, your phones, a lot of smartphones now, you can set it to facial recognition. So I can set this to my own picture and it will image capture me and automatically log me in via my face. So we're seeing more and more biometrics emerge. It's going to be a fact of life. Anywho, in our next section, we're going to start taking a look at data. We're going to talk about data backup, how to protect your information. And we're also going to talk about how to destroy your data. And yes, sometimes you want to destroy it intentionally.